Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ski the Mountain by Ian Harris, and this is published by The Game Crafter, and this is a game for two to six players in which you take on the role of a skier who is going to be spending the day skiing down the mountains in France. Um, you're going to be trying to complete various uh, runs in an attempt to gain points. Now, you have some specific targets that you want to reach during the day as well, but there are events that are going to occur that are either going to help you or hinder you. All the while, you're going to want to get this done and try to get down to the town before dark, otherwise you're going to be stuck on the mountain. Alright, let's take a look at this game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a quick look at Ski the Mountain here, and I have this set up to do a two-player demo uh, to give you an idea of how the game plays, and so let me quickly go over the components here that come in the game, and uh, I'll zoom out in a little bit here, but this one takes up a bit of space because there are three uh, boards that make up this game and the first one that we have here down at the bottom is the actual main game board itself and you'll see this mountain range here with a bunch of squiggly lines and straight lines that are on there and those correspond to the various ski runs that we will be able to go down and earn points and the orange lines are the ski lifts that will take us back up to the top of the mountain we have these two additional boards over here that I want to zoom in on. We have the scoring board here where we're going to be able to uh, track our points and then also is going to uh, be a reference to the difficulty of these ski runs that's going to come into play um, during the gameplay and that's going to be changing runs from one to the other as we're going down the mountain. So the green ones are the easiest ones and the black ones are going to be the uh, most difficult runs. It's how they're gauged by the color. And then we also have this run recorder over here and uh, if we take a look at these here there's going to be a specific name and then there's a circle uh, with a number inside of them and these are going to represent the various marked runs or named runs that are going to be on the game board and as we complete them we'll be able to claim them and gain points. And then there's kind of a set collection aspect here that we'll be able to gain bonus points here if we get a certain number of runs uh, completed. And then there's also going to be some end of game scoring opportunities. So let's take a look at the game board here and up at the top uh, we have this little sun here and we're going to move it across the board here. And as we go across you'll see that the sun is moving uh, in each of the little squares until finally it gets to where it's dark and the game will end. And along the way, you'll see these little Ski the Mountain um, icons, and that is where we're going to be drawing a uh, specific type of card, which will be an event card. Now, looking at the game board here, we've got some nice French text on here that is going to uh, give you the specific names of the peaks here, as well as the elevations. And I want to stop here to uh, take a look at uh, the game board in a little bit more detail. And if we see here, uh, we have this uh, specific blue dot there that has a fork and knife inside of it. And that's going to indicate that that space is a restaurant. And so uh, that is going to uh, come into play in resolving some of the event cards in the game. Also, if we note here that these ski runs here have those uh, circles with the numbers into them that corresponds to the run recording board and so that's going to be the uh, routes that you're going to want to complete to be able to score points so for example here um, in order to claim that like this number five here you'd have to start off at the top and ski all the way down to this spot here where that particular run ends and you'll be able to claim that and score points now there are some runs here if you notice that there are dots with no numbers in them and that's they still have a little name to them, but they're not specific ones that are on the recording board, and so you'll just be able to gain one point for each space that you ski over. Now, we also have these orange lines here, and these are going to uh, indicate a specific uh, 
type of ski lift that is going to be taking you up to the top of the mountain. And so there's three different types here. So if we take a look here, um, this particular one is a button lift, which is essentially like a tow rope. We have a chair lift here, and we also have a bubble lift that's going to take you up to the top. And so those also are going to uh, be uh, coming into play when it has to deal with certain event cards as well, and I'll get to that in a minute. And then down at the bottom we have these purple spaces here, which are the towns of which we're going to start the game and hopefully end the game. And then finally we have these gray routes at the bottom, which are transportation or bus routes, which you'll be able to move from town to town along the uh, bottom of the game board. All right, so we've gone over all of that, and uh, we also have these specific cards now that are going to be um, talked about. We have these event cards up here. We've got target cards, and we have over on the side, we have these pieced cards. And uh, so what we're going to do is shuffle up each of those particular uh, decks of cards. Uh, each player is going to be dealt one uh, target card, one event card, and seven of the pieced cards, and then we'll take the top three cards off of the pieced card deck and we'll place them off to the side. Each player then is going to take their player markers. Uh, they're going to place them on, uh, you're going to place a little scoring disc on the start space on the scoreboard, and you'll be able to place your, um, your little skier on one of the three starting uh, town spaces, and they'll be able to go from there. So I'm going to place this green one here, and this red one over in the corner down here. And then they're going to take these little uh, snowflake markers and they're going to put them in front of them too and we'll be using these uh, to mark things on the run recording board. So once we've done all of that, uh, we're going to take a look at these cards that have been uh, dealt to us and I'll show you how to play. Okay, looking at the cards here that we've been dealt here, I have one of these target cards here. Now this is going to be uh, remain hidden from your fellow players. You don't want them to know what's going on. You're going to essentially not reveal it until you have been able to uh, meet this specific target. So this one here for the red player says Ski Retour, which is the number seven blue run. And when I do, I'll be able to get a five point bonus. So over on the game board, the Retour run is all the way over on this side over there. And so if I'm able to complete that, I will be able to score not only the points for completing the run, but also an additional five point bonus. So that's going to stay down in front of me. Next we have these event cards here. And these are cards that you can play on your turn that is going to uh, benefit either yourself or harm your opponent. So for example here, this is a blizzard card. It says blizzard, missed this turn. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to play this on an opponent um, at any time. And uh, when they think that they're going to uh, want to go down a specific run, you can play this Blizzard card and it's going to be like, uh, no, you're not going to be able to do it. And uh, what's going to happen is they're going to have to uh, take their cards back into their hand. So fortunately they don't lose them, but you are going to uh, lose a turn. And turns in this game, uh, it's very crucial because you only have a specific amount of time um, you know, from when the time when the sun goes up till the time the sun goes down. So that's so time is of the essence. And then finally, we have these pieced cards here, and these are going to be um, how you're going to go down this mountain. So each of these uh, cards has a number value and a color associated with them. So let's take a look at this one here, for example. And this is a, a red four. And it's going to tell you, move up to four on red runs. So if I happen to be on one of these red runs here, I'll be able to move up to four spaces. So this one here, you're really cooking down the mountain. Whereas here, if you have a one, you're only going to move one space. So you're kind of going a little more slow and steady. So you have some of these cards in your hand. And uh, sometimes they can be a benefit, sometimes they're not. But uh, you'll be able to uh, manipulate these cards in your hand. So... Uh, Anyway, so that's what you're going to uh, start off with. Now, I want to uh, get into what's going to uh, constitute a turn order. And uh, so first thing that we're going to do here is, uh, well, on the first turn, it's already done. Um, 
we would have an, an event card drawn if there's this little uh, mark below it, but there's not. So um, on the very first turn, what we'll be able to do is we have uh, different options for our action. The first thing that we can do is we can take up to three of these uh, pieced cards and put them in our hand. Well, we have a hand limit of seven cards. So right now we're just starting off. Uh, so we won't be able to add any more cards, but the way that you'll be, the number of cards you'll be able to draw in is going to be determined by where your skier is on the uh, on the game board. So if he's in one of these restaurant spaces here, which is the knife and fork spot, he'll be able to, uh, or if he's down in the town, they'll be able to draw um, three cards. If we're on a ski lift here, space we will be able to draw two cards and if we are on one of these uh, these runs themselves if you're on a piste then uh, you'll just take one card and uh, you won't be able to move if you have that option uh, next thing that we can do is we can move on a piste you could be playing one of those piste cards or we can move up a ski lift from the bottom uh, orange spot all the way up to the top and uh, we can't move down a ski lift, uh, so you're only going to be able to go up. So if, say, for example, if you're here and you decide you want to ski this run here, you, you won't be able to go back down. You'll have to ski down and then transfer over. Uh, you'll be able to play an event card, or you can uh, pass if you want to. Uh, if you decide towards the end of the game that you think you have enough points and you're down in one of these purple spots, maybe you just want to pass and wait for the game to uh, to end. So, um, anyways, what let's uh, show you what some of these actions are going to be. So, for example, on a player's turn, if they chose to, they can move up the uh, ski run, and we'll say we're going to start start here, that player there, and player number two will move all the way up to the top up there. So that's going to constitute the first turn here. So we move the little track marker over here, and next, it'll be back to the red player, and let's look and see what we have here. Um, we're going to play this particular piece of card right here. It says, move up to four spaces on red runs. So we'll discard this card, and we move down. One, two, three, four. So we've kind of gone down that mountain already. We're cooking. Uh, over to player two. We're going to do the, uh, we're going to look here and see if we have a card that we can use and we uh, we don't really have something that, oh, we do have one here. We'll move two spaces on a red run. And so we'll go one, two. And so we're going to continue playing these cards until uh, we are going to be able to reach the bottom here. Um, let me look back on this player's card here. Uh, for red, we'll play this three here, move up to three on red runs. So. We're going to go one, two, and we've already skied down this particular run. So this is the red number four. And so what I'm going to do is I'll take one of my snowflake markers and up on the board here where the red number four is, I will place this on there and I'm going to score 10 points. So I'll move my score tracker up to 10. So that's how that is going to work. Um, now, uh, that is essentially how the game is played, but there's a couple things that I want to talk about here, and it has to go with the, uh, the, the level of difficulty. Uh, for example, if I was here on this red run, and I happen to play a 3 on here, um, so I'm very close to um, the end of this particular run. I can play this three here. And if I do, I have a couple different options. I can either choose to continue to go down this uh, red run here, one, two, three, and try to go all the way down. Or I can jump onto a less difficult run. So a uh, red one is pretty uh, powerful, so I can choose to uh, go one, two, three, jump on this blue one over here, or one, two, three. Um, if I had been um, going somewhere else, I wouldn't be able to necessarily jump from a, uh, like if I was going down this one here, 
and was going to play a blue card, um, I would not be able to jump on either this black or this red space here because those are more difficult runs. Um, so I'd only be able to continue down one of these blue spaces here and skiing across. So uh, that's going to um, affect the uh, movement when you're playing some of your cards. So as we continue uh, across this this uh, game, we're going to be playing cards, drawing cards into our hand, um, trying to meet specific targets. For example, uh, like I said, this one here, if we had met this specific target, we'd be able to play this. We'd be able to play uh, these event cards whenever we can. Now, as the sun marker moves across, for example, here, each player will then draw an event card. And so if we did that here, for example, this one, follow, follow trails, take the top discard. So play at any time to take the top piece card from the discard pile. Well, if there's something really appealing, you're going to want to use this to be able to take it. And you can play this at any time, so you don't necessarily have to do this on your turn. If you see something, you're like, oh, I'm going to play that, and boom, grab it. So that is uh, Ski the Mountain. Uh, lots of uh, moving up and down these particular, uh, particular game board here. And... Uh, so you can essentially do a bunch of skiing without getting cold and without getting a bunch of snow in your face. All right, let's talk about Ski the Mountain here. And let me talk about the gameplay first because uh, this is uh, a game that uh, certainly a family can enjoy. It has a simple point-to-point -point movement mechanic that's driven by some cards that are easy to understand. Uh, essentially, you're going to play a card, um, match up the colors. As long as you're on that run, you can play that card, move that number of spaces. And so, uh, not a difficult game to figure out to play that way. The game has uh, st some strategic elements in it that is going to uh, make it so that it's not so simple for everyone. And that is uh, going to be how you manage your hand and how you are going to uh, play your cards and how you're going to manage your turn. Because um, you're going to want to try to have more of the uh, higher movement point cards so that you can get uh, down the uh, slopes faster. Um, so that you can accumulate more points. And then the other thing is how you're going to, uh, you know, manage those those cards and how your movement down the runs because you're going to want to hopefully try to, uh, you know, get the maximum amount of movement on your card. So perhaps jumping onto another, uh, onto a less difficult run and keep moving down the mountain because if you uh, just stop off at a lift, you have to use your turn to go back up. And so you can waste a lot of time uh, being on the uh, ski lift if you're just kind of doing a bunch of little things. I'm sure you're going to be able to accumulate points, but um, you'll be able to accumulate more points if you spend more time on the mountain and less time in the ski lifts. Um, you have this uh, almost like a uh, set collection aspect, too, of trying to go after specific named runs uh, in order to uh, to score points, and then you can also earn additional points by completing a specific number of one color of run. So you've got a set collection aspect in there too, so that's going to drive the game as well. A couple other things that are um, with the gameplay is that uh, you have the event cards that are going to pop up uh, sporadically throughout the game, and those are not going to have a major effect on the game, but they are going to uh, they are going to uh, come into play eventually. And hopefully uh, you will be able to play cards that are either going to really benefit you in a great way or you can really slam one of your opponents and set them back. But all the while they're going to be looking to do the same thing uh, to you. So just be, per be aware of that. And then you also have these uh, target cards that are in there that you kind of keep secret. And so, so just go about your day and uh, you're trying to do specific things and um, you know, as soon as you meet, reach one of those targets, flip it over, score those points, draw another target card. So, so um, the first thing that you want to do, it's kind of like, you know, if you're going to go somewhere, I'm like, I'm going to do this. And so that's what that target card kind of simulates. You know, if you're going to go skiing, like, oh, I want to go down this specific run. Well, uh, some of those targets, like, you're going to do that. And there's other things that come into play, like passing somebody out, or you're going to meet somebody for lunch. So you have these specific things that uh, you're going to want to make sure... Uh, that uh, you pay attention to and capitalize on those those points. 
Now, uh, the, the driving factor of time in this game is, you know, you watch the, uh, on the game board, you'll see that the sun rises and sun sets, so you only have so much time. And so you have to be mindful of that more towards the end game. Um, if you feel pretty confident in where you're at point-wise, uh, you can choose to uh, go down to one of the purple spaces, which are one of the towns, and you can uh, essentially pass for the rest of the game. Now that can cause a lull for you um, if you choose to do that, and there's still a number of turns left, um, but the turns move pretty quickly. But uh, just be aware that uh, you might spend a couple of turns uh, not doing anything, but you did that uh, and you didn't risk being stuck on the mountain and losing points uh, at the end of the game. Now, the uh, end of game, if you are, uh, if, when the sun goes down, if you're stuck on the mountain, you have to work your way back down. Uh, that is the only time you can go down one of those ski lifts. And uh, the further out that you are from one of the towns, the more points you're going to lose. So you're going to have to be mindful of your time again. Now, uh, I have a couple of issues with the, uh, the game board in Ski the Mountain, and uh, that has to do with the fact that it's a very busy game board. Uh, there's a lot of routes there, and there's a couple of different uh, spots on the board where it just seems to be kind of cluttered. You have a lot of runs coming together, and that's fine. Maybe that's how it is in, uh, in real life. I've never been to France to go ski but uh, it can get kind of jumbled up and so that's going to take some getting used to. Um, you have uh, each of the little runs has a name on them and uh, but the font is really really small so you have to squint to look at it so um, so you kind of can miss out on some of the flavor of the game because uh, because of that. And um, the other thing is with, uh, with the busyness on the board, you're really going to have to pay attention to where the named runs are um, when you're going to try to complete them so that you can plan out how you're going to move around and get from one place to the other. You've got some that have numbers in there, some that don't have numbers, and so you're trying to uh, look all over for them, and fortunately they, move, they are numbered sequentially from left to right on the game board. But uh, it can be jumbled there, and so that was, uh, that was a kind of a, an issue that I had with the game board. Uh, so when you're bringing this out for the first time, uh, it can seem a little bit, uh, it may seem overwhelming to certain people if they're not used to a really uh, busy game board. Uh, one of the other things that um, I had kind of let the designer of the game know about was uh, component quality, and this is from the Game Crafter, so they only have, uh, you know, you only have a limited selection of things that you can do, and you also have cost factors involved, and I had uh, said to him that I was not too wild about the uh, the little chits, which are the, the tokens that you use to mark off your, uh, to mark off your completed runs. Uh, I would like to have seen little wooden cubes, but uh, that came down to uh, cost as a driving factor. And they're adequate, but just be aware that they are essentially cardstock, and um, if you're not careful, they can get moved off, the, uh, moved off of the scoring mat very easily. So those are the two things that I kind of, uh, those are the things that I had issues with. The busy board and the small font, you kind of miss out on a few things and you have to kind of get used to it. And then uh, just that one selection for uh, component quality. Other than that, uh, this is a, a game, like I said, that thematically, uh, thematically, you feel like you're skiing and uh, the rules and everything kind of explain you're there to ski. You're not there to uh, spend your time driving driving around the mountain or spending all your time on ski lift. So, uh, so it, you know, it accomplishes that objective too. Uh, looking at this game from a family perspective, uh, this is something that, uh, you know, just as easy. Um, everybody can be able to enjoy. You can uh, have a little French lesson on there with some of the text that's on the board. A little bit of geography lesson there too, as you have uh, the different names of the peaks and the altitudes and stuff like that. Um, the gameplay, again, this is going to be coming down to how you're going to make the best use of your time and how you're going to manage the cards in your hand. Um, so you're going to be able to have a quick lesson of uh, slow and steady doesn't necessarily win the race in this particular game. So you're going to have to really try to uh, vary your hand. Uh, again, this is just a, a game that uh, families can enjoy 
and uh, you can bring this out to the table and you can get your skiing fix on without without getting frostbite and that is ski the mountain all right that's it for now and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table